Hello and welcome back to LearnSBOM.com. My name is Skylar and I'm going to be talking you through OSS Review Toolkit, or better known as ORT. ORT is an open source software that is an SBOM generator, manager, security scanner, license scanner, and report generator and consolidator. The first step is to clone ORT. And if we look here, we can see that I have done that. You will need to clone it with submodules updated you can do that either when you're cloning it or after you've already cloned it. The first thing you must do is build it using docker. So the command is docker build dash t ort dot. Dot just specifies that it's the current directory. So this is going to build the entire project and once you do that you will then be able to run all the commands. So now that docker is finished building we can now start running it. Most of the functionality that comes with ORT builds off of the analyze command. So we're gonna run that one first and again with docker, but since I'm gonna be analyzing a program not in this current directory, I'm going to back out one because I'm gonna be analyzing a file in the repos directory. And now I can run this command. So first, since I'm running it through docker, I'm going to do docker run, and then I'm setting the mount point. So for me, it's pwd, which is print working directory. I am in PowerShell, so I have to have a slash here in order for it not to flow over into the colon and break. And then I'm mounting that to the project directory in the docker itself. Next, I'm going to be running the ORT command. I'm going to specify info and then analyze. And then we can do dash H to see what the help menu would look like. This is the help menu. The asterisk means that it is required. So for the analyze command, it requires a project directory to input and an output file path. It doesn't need a format, but I will be adding that just to do something other than YAML. And then I'm not going to be doing any of these other configuration options because they are slightly more complex. But if you want, you can read through them and if they apply to your needs, you can do that. So to get on with the command, I'm going to delete the dash H and replace it with dash F, which specifies the format. I'm going to just have it JSON. You can choose between the three, which is JSON, XML, and YAML. Next, I'm going to specify the input file, which is the current directory, but since I'm running it on Docker, it's through Docker, so slash project. And then I'm going to be running it a program called serverless goat. The reason I'm running this one is because it has a known vulnerability, so we can see if ORT's vulnerability scanner actually picks it up. I'm then going to specify the output directory, so that's the dash O option, and then project, and I'm going to put it just in the ORT drive. So let's do ORT, and then I'm going to do the inner ORT drive ORT, and then I'm going to make an analyzer directory, so just like that. Now if we run this command, it will do some stuff and then finish rather quickly. So overall, the analyzer program by itself isn't really too helpful, but as I said, it is necessary for all the other commands that ORT has, so it's a very good starting point. The next section we're going to look at is the advise command. So we're just going to start it out the same way that we did the analyze command. We're going to do docker run and then specify where it's being mounted to. So pwd and then we're doing slash colon and then we're mounting it to the project directory. And then also we're going to call ORT dash dash info advise with the help option. When we run this, we can see the available options. 
that we can use with the advice command. The required ones is the output directory and the input file. So this requires the analyzer results. As I mentioned previously, the analyze results are important for most other ORT options. And then we need an advisor value. It can be your own personal vulnerability exchange, or it can be the open source one. I am just gonna do the open source one to show you how the command works. So now that we know the three required options, let's write the command. So let's do docker run pwd again. And then we're calling ORT info advise. So let's first start with specifying the format. We're doing JSON again, just to keep things the same. I'm going to specify the advisor. In my case, I'm doing OSS index. Then I'm going to specify the input file, which is project, my current directory, ORT, and then ORT again, and then analyzer. This would just be the same file path that you set when running the initial command up here. So for me, it's project ORT, ORT, analyzer. So that's the same here, but I do need to obviously specify the file itself, which is analyzer-result.json. And then I'm going to specify the output file. So just to keep everything in the same-ish spot, I'm going to do project ORT, ORT, and then advise. So if we run this command, we can see a couple stuff happen. So it ran, and if we check the file where the advising should be located, we can see that there is, in fact, an advisor result JSON. The interesting part about this is that it includes the previous analyzer results, all the information that was found in there. So if you want, you can keep adding on to this one file and get the scanner information and evaluator information all in one file. So that's really beneficial. So what we're going to look at for this one is the advisor section. We have some metadata here and then we have the results. So it found a vulnerability from OSS index and the vulnerabilities that it found was only one. And here is the name of it or the ID. And then it has some information on what the vulnerability is. So it links us to Sonotype Deep Shield, Depth Shield, and it has a vulnerability score of 5.3. It gives you some descriptions and what the software does. So the final command that I'm going to go over today is the report command. This works in a similar way to the advise command. If we do report dash H, we can see all the possible values that are going to be set. We have three mandatory files up at the top here, the input file, the output directory of all the results, and then report format, which is a comma separated list of all the formats that you would like. As you can see, there is Cyclone DX, there is SPDX, and there are a bunch of other options. I'm going to be demonstrating the PDF template and Cyclone DX because they do give different information. There's also a bunch of configuration options and other extra options down here. We did dash H, but there is dash O. I'm just going to do the required ones for this demo, just to give you an idea of what the program can do. So now we're going to run the command this to start. It's the same as what we've been doing this whole time. I'm going to delete the dash H and start with the input file. So this is the file that we just created with the advisor command. So if we go project ORT, ORT, advise, and then the advisor result.json file. The next option is the output directory. I'm going to put it in a similar space to the analyze and advise directories. So project slash ORT, ORT, 
And then I'm going to do report. So that's just the directory where I want the report to go. And now I'm going to specify the output file types. So as I said before, we're going to do cyclone dx and PDF template. So the reason I'm doing this is just to show you the different options and the fact that different options have different output styles. After running this command, we can look in the file explorer and see the files that were created. If we check out this first one, defect report, it isn't anything that interesting because we don't have any packages with defects that have been found. So that's good news. It has a disclosure document which, if I scroll up, has some acknowledgements, project licenses. Since we didn't do the command that evaluates all the licenses that are required for a project, we don't have any information here. And then the dependencies that this program needs. Since we only have the one, it is going to be pretty bland. But again, normally you would have a bunch. The next section is the appendix, and in my case it is the license from MIT saying that permission is granted free of charge to use the software. And then the final section is license files for packages. Since we don't really have that many packages, there isn't any licenses. Then if we go to the vulnerability report, this is really what we're looking at. This is probably the most interesting section. Um, it'll say the vulnerable packages that were found. It has the same information as the report that we saw with the same link telling you what the vulnerability is. And when you have a lot of vulnerabilities, this would be really good to look at all of them in a condensed form. The final file is something slightly different. We didn't really see a bunch of information on what the project contains. So if we edit this final file, we can see that it includes a type of library and contains the node UUID library. If we compare the CycloNDX result to the analyzer file that we created first, we can see that the node UUID is found here under packages. It is a very short project, so there is only one package. Obviously, this would be more filled up if there were a bunch of other dependencies, but it does include information on the type, the version number, some description, hashes, licenses, and some just generic information on what the component is. So that was the report command. It has a bunch of functionality. If you were to run every option that they have on a specific project. You can get a bunch of license information, vulnerability information, dependency information, and so on. Overall, ORT has a lot of different functionality that can benefit you and your organization. It has the ability to generate SBOMs. It can integrate with license compliancy software. It can scan for vulnerabilities. It can evaluate licenses against customizable rules. It can generate reports, as we saw, and can send the different results through channels like email or JIRA tickets. The biggest issue I had with ORT is getting it to run. Their documentation isn't fabulous, and since it is much more complicated than many of the other open source software, it was more complicated to understand and start running it. But again, there is trade-offs. If it's harder to run and better when you learn how to run it, is that more beneficial to your organization than something that's easy to figure out but doesn't have a lot of customizability? That has been ORT. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here. And then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.